So we're back. So we're now in the second part of our lecture on liver physiology. So again, I'm Dr. Ana Angelica Makalalag Josue, and in this part of the lecture, we're going to talk about bile formation and secretion. No? So your bile mostly contains bile salts, phospholipids, cholesterol, and bile pigments, or your bilirubin. It's, bilirubin is a yellowish and greenish um, pigment no? that is produced by your um, liver. No? So, your bile salts, no? a major component of your bile, are amphipathic molecules. So, what does amphipathic molecules mean? It just means that they have uh, both hydrophilic or water-loving and hydrophobic portions. No? So, they have a water-loving um, portion and a water phobic portion no that's your bile salt so when you eat a fatty a fatty meal no you will in order for you to be able to absorb the fat no it needs first to undergo emulsification so how does this happen no so your fats are emulsified by the binding of your bile salt into the fat droplet, uh, into the into the fat globule, no? So the hydrophobic portion will attach to the fat globule, no? And the water loving or the hydrophilic portion will remain outside, no? So the outside of the and this will form a, an emulsified fat droplet, or what we call a fat micelle, no? So the micelle will now it ha will have a hydrophilic or water-soluble outside portion and the inner will be um, fat-soluble or fat, uh, love fat, will have your fat globule, no? And because the outer portion has now become hydrophilic, this will now be able to facilitate the absorption of your fat globule into your portal venous system, no? So, how do we form bile? No? So, bile is produced continuously by your hepatocytes. No? And the bile that is produced by your hepatocyte drains into the hepatic ducts and is stored in the gallbladder for subsequent release. No? So, for example, um, and your bile salts are, the bile salts in the bile are recirculated in your um, GI tract. So, how does this happen? No, I'll show you later in the succeeding slides. No? So, your, the, the main precursor of your bile, no, your bile is really mostly to help you absorb food, particularly your fatty food. No? So, your bile um, is mostly synthesized from cholesterol in the liver. So, your cholesterol is acted upon by the enzyme 7 alpha hydroxylase to form your um, kinodeoxycholic acid. If it's acted upon by C27 dehydroxylase, it becomes your cholic acid. And your cholic acid and your deoxy kinodeoxycholic acid are what we call primary uh, primary bile acids, no? And when it reaches your um, intestine, when your bile reaches, your primary bile acid reaches your intestine, it's acted upon by intestinal bacteria to become your secondary bile acid, your deoxycholic acid, your lithocholic acid, and your also deoxycholic acid, no? And after this, no, it's... Um, conjugate it it undergoes conjugation of bile acid it's combined either with glycine or to form your uh, it's combined either with your glycine or your taurine to become your conjugated um, bile acids no oh, this is the same so what happens when you eat 
fatty food. When you eat fatty food, no? Uh, and it reaches your duodenum, no? It sends a signal to your to your gallbladder um, through the release of your CCK or your cholecystokinin. So when you eat um, um, when you eat fatty food, some of it will be broken down into fatty acids and small peptides. And in response to that, no, um, your intestine will secrete cholecystokinin, a hormone that tells your gallbladder that the bile is needed to emulsify and absorb lipids in the duodenum. So when, when you have fat in your duodenum, your CCK is released in the bloodstream and it signals the gallbladder to contract and release the bile into the duodenum in order to emulsify it so that the fats will be absorbed into your portal circulation. No? Because if it's not emulsified, it cannot be absorbed. No? Aside from that, no, your CCK will send signal to your um, dorsal vagal complex to your spine which will send um, a nerve signal in order to release acetylcholine and the acetylcholine will now cause the contraction of your gallbladder in order to release the um, bile into your duodenum. Your CCK also will cause the relaxation of your sphincter of Oddi because even if the gallbladder contracts and pumps in the bile into the bile ducts. If the sphincter of Oddi is contracted, it cannot be released into the duodenum. So your sphincter of Oddi also has to be relaxed at the same time to release the bile into the duodenum. Okay. So next, we're going to talk about bile acid recirculation. So your bile acid is actually recycled by your GI tract so that um, you don't need to continuously produce and produce your bile acids. So first, no, your bile acids or your bile salts no, is mostly composed of recycled. 95% is recycled no, bile salts. No, and only 5% are newly synthesized by the liver. And this conserves energy also for the liver. No? So from cholesterol, your cholest again, no, your, your cholesterol is is converted into your bile salts as we have discussed earlier and this bile salt is really is stored in the gallbladder and the gallbladder releases bile in response to food in your duodenum in your in your bile salts will now facilitate the absorption of your fat all throughout your intestine and then when it reaches your um, terminal ileum, no? the last part of the duodenum, no, 95% of those bile salts will now be reabsorbed no? um, through a sodium bile acid co-transporter. And this facilitates the return or the recirculation of bile acids back to the liver through the enterohepatic circulation. And then the bile salts that have been returned will now be used again. No? And the cycle goes on and on. No? But it's mentioned here that it's only about 95%. And 5% of the bile salts are eventually lost in the feces. In your feces. And that's why 5% have to be synthesized anew by your liver. Okay? <coughs> so what happens if your patient undergoes ileal resection so for example they find let's say a mass in your ileum and they have to resect that portion of the intestine now what happens no? aside from many other functions of your terminal ileum such as your absorption of your of your vitamin D calcium, etc. No? So, when you have a patient with ileal resection, your bile acids are not, are not recirculated to the liver, but instead, all of them are excreted in the feces because it's where 
your sodium bile acid co-transporter is located. So if you don't have any, if you don't have any that anymore, the bile acids or the bile salts will not be reabsorbed or recirculated. So therefore, the bile acid pool, no, the the pool of bile acids of the liver are quickly depleted, and therefore, your fat absorption is not very efficient, no. And if the fat absorption is impaired, you will have steatorrhea or fatty stools. So if you have steatorrhea, you have fatty stools, when you defecate, the stools will be floating in the toilet bowl. And that signals that the, the stool is very rich in fat because the fat is not absorbed, was not absorbed by your intestine because of the lack or lack of bile acids no that's important in absorbing your um, lipids no and aside from that you also have your lipid soluble vitamins no your lipid soluble vitamins um or your fat soluble vitamins such as your vitamin a b e and k no they need bile acids in order for them to be absorbed by the body so, if you have um, deficiency in your bile acid, for example, you are unable to recir recirculate your bile acid, you can have certain vitamin deficiency of your fat-soluble vitamins. So, to summarize, no, again, no, so your bile is synthesized from the liver and stored in the gallbladder and in response to um, fat in the duodenum or presence of lipid in the duodenum that needs emuls emulsification in order for it to be absorbed. Your gallbladder is stimulated by your cholecystokinin in order to release the, um, uh, in order to facilitate contraction of your gallbladder and relaxation of sphincter of Odi and release of bile into the duodenum. And the bile containing your bile salts, your bile acids will facilitate the absorption of lipids into your entire small intestine and once it reaches it, the terminal ileum, it will act, undergo active reabsorption through your sodium bile acid co-transporter and then it is returned now into the liver for recycling. No? And 5% uh, of that, 5% of the bile acid will spill over into the colon and this will be now excreted into your feces and the lost bile acid in the feces will now be need to be synthesized again by your liver so about five percent no, is synthesized anew by the liver for each cycle of enterohepatic circulation of your bile so in order in summary of our liver physiology lecture the vital functions of the liver include Carbohydrate, lipid, and protein metabolism and synthesis, detoxification of unwanted substances, excretion of circulating substances that are lipid soluble and carried in the bloodstream bound to albumin, and it's also important in the synthesis of major plasma proteins including albumin. No? The substances are excreted from the liver in bile. So, bile acids are amphipathic end products of cholesterol metabolism that are produced by your hepatocyte and they circulate between the liver and the intestine to conserve their mass. No? And aside from that, no water insoluble metabolites as for pure cholesterol are carried in bile in the form of mixed micelles in order to absorb this into the circulation. So, bile is stored in, bit, in the gallbladder between meals where it is concentrated and released when hormonal and neural signals from your cholecystokinin and your acetylcholine no, simultaneously help contract the gallbladder and relax the sphincter of Odi in order to release the bile into the duodenum. And lastly, the liver is critical for disposing of certain substances that would otherwise be toxic. To the body if allowed to accumulate in the bloodstream and that includes bilirubin and ammonia. No? So again, we talked about briefly about the pathologic state of the liver, particularly your cirrhosis. No? So this is an actual picture of a liver with cirrhosis. No? Very common among chronic alcoholics. No? 
because alcohol destroys your liver. You will see a lot of scar tissue that has resulted in the formation of this lobulated um, liver. Now, instead of the smooth and shiny texture of the liver, your liver would look ugly like this. No? And how would this manifest? No? Remember, when, when you have chronic liver disease, your, your liver is important in the synthesis of plasma proteins. And your plasma proteins are important in keeping your intravascular volume. If you don't have loss of, if you have low plasma proteins, the, the, you're unable to keep your intravascular volume, it will manifest as ascites and um, edema. No? And if you're unable to um, process your bilirubin, no? your bilirubin will remain in your circulation and will and the yellowish pigment would would manifest as jaundice no? the, um, and this jaundice is manifested here as icterisha or yellowish discoloration of your sclera no i i mentioned earlier about portal hypertension if you have portal hypertension no the blood is unable to freely flow into the liver there's a backflow into your portal circulation and this is manifest with no caput medusae, these are dilated veins around the umbilicus and the portal vein. This can also manifest as esophageal varices and hemorrhoids. And another important manifestation is your ecchymosis. No, this is because our ecchymosis are bruises, no easy bruisability. You would easily get bruises, no, with just slight trauma. And this is because of a coagulation problem, no. Because remember, your liver is important in synthesizing your coagulation factors. No? Um, some patients with chronic liver disease can manifest also with gynecomastia or abnormal enlargement of the liver, most uh, abnormal enlargement of the breast. No? And this is particularly prominent in, among males. No? Males should not have breasts, no? enlarged breasts. No? So when they have enlarged breasts, that's called gynecomastia. And this happens because the liver is unable to break down estrogen and the excess estrogen results in enlargement of your breast tissues. And there are many other more manifestations of chronic liver disease. And, um, um, and this is because of the multitude of functions that the liver does for our body. And if you have a failed liver, you have a chronic liver disease, especially if it has decompensated, no? meaning the liver is no longer able to cope um, because of extensive damage. No? You will have a lot of manifestations in the body. And sometimes the only way to fix it too is to get a new liver. Okay, so the ref my references for this lecture is Guyton, Burn and Levy, and your BRS patient. And thank you for listening. Thank you for patiently waiting for the upload of this video. And I look forward to discussing the important aspects of liver physiology with you in class. Thank you.